Hello beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today I thought it would be fun to talk about some of the books I wish that I could read for the very first time. I got the idea for this video from Ash at Ash Heart Books. She recently posted a video about all of the books she wishes that she could read for the very first time and I really liked the idea of this because I am actually not a rereader. I know how blasphemous that can sometimes be in the bookish community but to me there is nothing that can rival the magic of finishing your favorite book for the first time. No matter how many times you revisit or re read that book. The magic is never the same as when you read it for the very first time. And personally, I just don't like revisiting stories because one of the most magical things to me about reading is discovering that new story for the very first time. Starting it at the beginning and seeing it through all the way until the very end and going back and reading it when you already know all of the things that are going to happen. It's just not the same. I know a lot of people feel that way about things like mystery and thrillers because one of the whole reasons why you're reading that story is because you want to find out the who did it, right? You want to get through the story but like once you've gotten through it, the suspense is gone and you don't feel the need to reread it. I actually kind of feel that way about almost every book. I don't feel the need to reread books, even the books that are my favorite, because I know that the reading experience is not going to be the same. And because of that, I would very much love to be able to read some of my favorite books for the very first time. And maybe not even my favorite books for the very first time. Maybe just some books that I want to read for the first time and understand it better than I did the first time around. So today we're going to talk about some of the books I wish that I could read for the very first time again. So I'm going to start with probably the most obvious one, the one that's probably going to be the most popular answer to this question and that is the Harry Potter series. So I started reading Harry Potter when they were first being released. I discovered Harry Potter in 1999. The first three books had already been released at that time but they weren't even close to the popularity that they ended up growing to in the later years as the other books were released. In fact my discovery of the Harry Potter series, a series that has been the most influential book series of my entire life, my discovery of that series was completely on accident. I like to tell this story because it's so remarkable how I accidentally discovered discovered a series that basically changed my life and became one of the biggest parts of my life. My mom and I were in a Tower Records store. Yes, for those of you who remember Tower Records, we were walking into a Tower Records store. I was about 11 years old, so I was actually the same age as these characters. I literally grew up with these characters and there was a display for the first three Harry Potter books. And I remember reading the backs of the books and thinking that the Sorcerer's Stone sounded the most interesting to me. And so we picked it up and that's how it all began. So not only was my discovery of the series an accident, but I chose the first book in that series completely on accident. And that has just created this love affair that has gone on for the past 24 years. I know that I'm dating myself here, but yes, like 24 years, Harry Potter has been a part of my life. But I was reading those books after that point as they came out. So my first reading experience of those first three books was when I was 11 years old. And so I was very young when I read the vast majority of these books. And I definitely don't remember the reading experience that I had with them. I just remember falling in love with them. And I would love to be able to go back and just read them all for the first time and experience that magic. Yeah, Harry Potter for sure is one that I would love to reread for the first time. And of course, this is going to come as no surprise to any of y'all, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is pretty much the book that I actively tell people is my favorite. And the reason why I tell people this is my favorite is just because not only how stunningly beautiful this story was, but because of how viscerally I reacted to the end of the story. I was full on sobbing by the end. And it takes an incredible book to be able to elicit that reaction from me. If you've read this book and you've reached the end, you probably know what I'm talking about. But like the end of this was just so devastating to me. And I enjoyed it from page one. I enjoyed hearing Evelyn Hugo talk about her story, the fight and climb through old Hollywood as she tried to be a respected celebrity as a woman, as she had to do some things that maybe she didn't want to do to get to the top because she wasn't respected as a woman. She wasn't always likable. Sometimes she made really bad decisions, really questionable decisions, but overall she was human and she was relatable. And in the end, I felt like I could go and watch an Evelyn Hugo movie. That's how real Taylor Jenkins Reid made this character. And this overall, everything about it was just stunning. It was just absolutely stunning. And I know that if I were to reread this, and this is one of the reasons why I haven't reread this, but I just know that trying to reread this book, knowing what happens and knowing the ending, it's not going to gut punch me probably as much as it did the first time. It probably would still affect me because I, I do know what's coming and I know to anticipate what's coming, but still there will never be anything like my very first experience with this story. I would love to be able to meet Evelyn Hugo for the very first time again. No question. So y'all know that I have a deep love of Jay Kristoff. I recently just finished the Nevernight Trilogy, which is by far one of my favorite adult fantasy series of all time. And for sure, I would love to experience that series for the first time. But another Jay Kristoff series, this one in collaboration with Amy Kaufman, is one that I don't talk about too terribly often on my channel, but it is probably one of the most amazing reading experiences I've ever had, and I would love to have it again for the first time. And that is The Illuminae Files. This is a three book series of YA sci-fi, high epic space operas. But what's amazing about these, and let me take off this dust jacket because it's loud and crinkly, is that they are told entirely in mixed media format. So these 
these are chunky chunky books but they go by so incredibly fast because they are mixed media and they are just so phenomenally done they are fast paced they are action packed the characters in here are wonderful and of course the humor in here is wonderful as well Jay Kristoff just has like the best sense of humor it is 100% my sense of humor and I would just love to be able to dive into these and experience the mixed media format for the first time I actually wouldn't mind going back and reading these while listening I don't think I would recommend just listening to these stories although I believe the audiobooks for these are graphic audio so there's like a full cast or sound effects and things of that nature so that's one of the reasons why I do want to listen but I don't think that you can beat just actually sitting down and looking at the mixed media so I really feel like the best way to experience this is probably to sit down and physically read with your eyeballs while listening to it and that's probably the only way I would ever like reread this series this was just so unique it was so phenomenal and you would think it would be hard to get into but it's not it really isn't it just absorbs you in like once you get used to the structure and the formatting and then the characters it just sucks you in and it doesn't let you go so I highly recommend this series and it is absolutely one that I would love to read for the very first time and the next one that I would love to read for the very first time is actually A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass so the reason I want to revisit this one is not because this is the best book in the world or even my favorite book in the series because it's absolutely not everybody knows that Akamath is the best book in the series and not because I love this book immensely but it's actually because I didn't I first read this book in around 2015 2016 when it was originally released and this was a time when I was still very much not a fantasy reader I had a really hard time with fantasy books because I had a hard time realizing that these were books set in realms that were completely separate from real life I was always trying to place the books within the context of what I already knew and it's taken me a long time to be able to actively love and read fantasy because I have to fully disconnect myself from what I know in the real world but what is actually real in these fantasy worlds and I often find myself like wondering what the extent of these fantasy worlds are like for example with Court of Thorns and Roses this is the map that you get but like is this the entirety of their world like is this all that there is to their world there's nothing else beyond this questions like this really got me because I was trying to place things in the context of real life and trying to imagine things as they are here in reality and it just it just didn't work so two things really hindered my reading experience of this first of all is that I wasn't an experienced fantasy reader I didn't even know if I liked fantasy but also I had not yet discovered my love of audio I was still trying to read these books when I was actively an undergraduate and reading was very hit or miss like I was hardly reading at all as an undergraduate because I was so fully engrossed in textbooks like that's all I was reading but also my concentration was just shot it's still shot like I have mentioned this multiple times but I don't normally just sit down and read a book anymore because I can't my concentration is just not there I was trying to concentrate on a fantasy book during a time when I wasn't a fantasy reader I had not yet discovered audiobooks and how much they could have helped me get through this book so I would love to get to read this series for the very first time as somebody who is much more competent in their ability to read fantasy next I want to talk to you about one of my favorite World War II historical fictions The Storyteller by Jodi Picoult when I first read this book I was not expecting this to become one of my favorite World War II historical fictions of all time Jodi Picoult I have found is a very masterful storyteller she puts a lot of research into the books that she writes no matter what subject she is writing about you can tell that it is really truly well researched but a lot of her books are contemporary in nature I don't even know if she has any other historical fictions this is a dual timeline story one is set in the present day and one is set in World War II in the present day you are following our main character who has befriended this older gentleman who is part of a grief support group that she goes to but is also a frequent patron of the bakery that she works at and after getting to know him he makes a very startling confession to her that he was a Nazi in World War II and did some horrible terrible things and he wants Sage's help with something I'm not gonna say what it is but he's kind of trying to atone for everything that he did in World War II and he wants Sage's help to do that but she is horrified she is absolutely disgusted because her grandmother was a World War II concentration camp survivor so you're following her struggle in the present as this kind-hearted seemingly loving old gentleman was actually a vicious Nazi killer in World War II and she's really dealing with all of the complex emotions that come with that and especially with the request that he's made of her and then you're also flashing back to the past when you're following Sage's grandma during World War II and her experiences and when I tell you that there was a twist in here that almost literally knocked me off my feet I'm not exaggerating now thinking back on it this is a twist that I wonder if other people saw coming and I was just too absorbed in the story to really see it coming but I literally did not see that coming it's not even something that I had entertained while reading the story and when the twist came tears just started streaming down my cheeks absolute tears and it made it even that much more emotional and heartbreaking it was just so harrowing and I know it's so weird to say that I want to have this harrowing experience again it's those emotions that really make a book amazing for me you know what I mean and so I want to have that for the very first time with this I want to go in not knowing the twist not knowing what is coming and I want to feel all of those things again for the very first time another one that I would like to read for the very first time that's going to be no surprise to anybody is The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker this is definitely my favorite romance story of all time I've also loved the second book in the series equally but for different reasons as well as the novella that comes with it as well I typically don't read novellas but I had to read the novella that goes along 
with this series because I love this world and the characters so 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 much. This is a hate to love grumpy sunshine romance between Kella and Jonah. Kella is kind of a spoiled city girl living in Toronto with her mother. She was actually born in Alaska to a bush pilot named Wren but Kella's mother could not stand the harsh Alaska wilderness, the isolation, her being constantly worried about Wren and his safety and so when Kella was just two her mom took her and moved to Toronto and they've lived a very great life. Her mom has remarried. She has an excellent stepfather named Simon but she's never been able to maintain a close relationship with her father. Her father never went out to Toronto to visit her and when Kella I believe was in middle grade something happened that caused a real rift between her and her father. Now Kella is in her mid-20s and she gets a call from a woman she doesn't know that says she needs to come to Alaska because something is going on with Ren. Ren is sick and this may be her last opportunity to get to know her father. So she flies to Alaska and one of her first encounters with people out there is Jonah who is a bush pilot that works for Ren and Jonah is just this gruff burly person who has no time for Kella. He finds her very high maintenance, very spoiled, very judgmental of their lifestyle out there and he lets Kella know all of this. Like he lets Kella know that he has no patience with her. And Jonah is also very judgmental of Kella's relationship with Ren because he looks to Ren as a father figure and he doesn't understand how Kella just kind of threw that all away. So Kella is very judgmental of Jonah. Jonah is very judgmental of Kella and then as they kind of get to know each other they kind of realize that their perceptions were incorrect and it starts to be this very beautiful love story. There's also a lot of harder hitting elements in here as well because you're dealing with a sick parent and it was just beautiful, touching, emotional, sweet, all of the things that you would want in a story. There's a lot to unpack in these novels and they're just they're just so beautiful. They're wonderful and I would love to experience them for the first time. On a completely different note, one I would absolutely love to experience for the first time is Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. This is the very first Karen Slaughter book that I ever read but this is another one that fell victim to the fact that I was trying to read it physically. I hadn't discovered audiobooks yet and so I retained very very little of this story. I don't really want to say too terribly much about this story because I don't want to give anything away but it is about two estranged sisters who kind of come back together to uncover some family secrets that have been long buried especially concerning the disappearance of their sister many many years ago and one of the sisters in here discovers a very disturbing secret about her husband. This is definitely a dark gruesome gritty suspense thriller. Karen Slaughter does not write any other type of books so if you don't feel like you can handle that content please be mindful when going into this because she is not afraid to put her characters through some stuff. I just really wish that since this was my first Karen Slaughter book that I could read it for the first time like on audio through a medium that I know I would be able to absorb more of what was happening because I remember very little about this story overall. I don't even really remember much of my reading experience about this story and this is definitely the book by Karen Slaughter that gets the most praise and the most hype. I almost feel like if I were to put this on audiobook that it would be like the first time so I may go ahead and do that at some point because I remember almost nothing about this but this is absolutely one that I would love to have a first experience with again. Another one I would like to read for the first time is If We Were Villains by Emil Rio. This currently stands still as my favorite dark academia of all time but it was also the very first dark academia book that I ever read. This was also the point when I firmly started to discover audiobooks and this was one of the first ones that I actually listened to and really really enjoyed. So there are a lot of really fond memories that I have of this story. I just loved the vibes overall. I loved the story. I loved the mystery, the past, and the present timelines. It follows a man named Oliver who has recently been released after 10 years in prison. He was convicted for killing one of his friends. He had a very tight friendship group at this very prestigious like dramatic arts college that he was a part of and so he spent 10 years in prison for a crime that he didn't commit and so in the present you're following him as he's sharing his story and then you're following the past perspective and what actually happened and I just thought that this was phenomenal. I would love to be able to experience it now for the first time as a more experienced dark academia lover because I would think I would be getting even more out of it during that time. So this one for sure. Switching gears again, one that I would love to visit for the first time is Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. This was just such a sweet, touching, hard hitting actually young adult magical realism story. It is set on an island and this island has witches and you're following two sisters and what happens to them on this island and it was just beautiful and so atmospheric. Very short but it really really packs a punch. It really does. There are some like I said harder hitting elements to this including sexual assault so be mindful of that when you go in. But this was just so stunning. Like I just really wish that I would be able to go back and read this for the first time and have those same feelings that I did because this was fantastic. And then the final one that I wanted to talk to you about today is No Exit by Taylor Adams. So this is a thriller suspense novel. This is definitely one that you read once and only once because the vibes, the suspense, the thrill, the isolation, the desperation, the desolation, that is something that you get so hardcore in this story and you're never going to be able to get that again if you try to revisit it. This is definitely my favorite wintry isolation thriller of all time because it was so masterfully done and I remember reading this and just being so absorbed and so focused on the book and what was happening and just feeling like I was there with these characters. This follows our main character Darby. She is a college student and she is desperately trying to get to her mother who is dying in a hospital in Utah and she is going to do anything that she can to get there but it is Colorado. It is the middle of a blizzard, a huge huge snowstorm that is treacherous to drive through and 
and as she is making her way to Utah, she realizes that she cannot continue with the weather as it is. And so she stops at this very isolated rest stop to kind of wait out the storm. And when she gets there, she is definitely not alone. There are a handful of strangers in this rest stop and she just has to kind of wait it out with them. However, she really wants to get a hold of her sister and let her sister know that she's coming. She's trying to get there and what's going on, but there's no cell reception. She's told by one of the people in the rest stop that there's like the specific spot out there that if you get it just right, you might be able to get some cell reception. And so she's out there, she's trying to figure out the reception issue. And on her way back to the rest stop, she passes by a van with a cage and in this cage is a little girl and suddenly it is no longer about just being stuck at a rest stop with strangers it is now about being stuck at a rest stop with a kidnapper and possibly worse and she has now got the survival of this child on her hand she's got to figure out how to rescue this child so it's a race for survival for both her and this child and it was so so suspenseful overall this was just an amazing reading experience for me and it is one that I wish that I could have for the first time I have not yet found another wintry isolation thriller that has beat this some have come close but have not entirely beat this in terms of just atmosphere and thrill and just you feel like you're in danger and you're just rooting for this character hardcore to get out of the situation you have no idea what she's going to do how she's going to get out of it and it was just fantastic from start to finish and I would love to read it for the first time all right y'all that is it those are some of the books that I really wish that I could read for the very first time and have those same magical experiences with them please comment down below and let me know some of the books that you wish that you could read for the very first time and as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already I post two videos a week sometimes three if I have my shit together and a third video to film and I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys.